Greetings YouTube, welcome back to the channel. Normally this video would be posted at like 1 a.m. Central Standard Time, but I had this rare moment tonight where I was kind of caught up on the arena and had a moment to myself and so I uh, decided to go through the messages that usually I don't go through until much later online and Twitter, email, etc. And my goodness, I cannot remember this level of anger and disappointment from new content this fast since the maze do you ogs remember the maze that super hard thing that had horrible rewards and so many people didn't do but what makes this really strange is that it's supposed to be fun and relatively easy we know this because some of you quite passionately messaged me that you were very upset about the rewards of the new variant content. And you didn't just tell me about it, you went to the forums. And Kabam Mike, everyone's favorite human being, uh, heard you. But it was Kabam Thrillson, maybe Kabam Mike's secret uh, burner account, that said... It's not in-game content, so the rewards are justified. Keep in mind that some of the people who are commenting, they weren't saying that the rewards needed to be what this Kabam mod interpreted them to be. They weren't saying they needed to be Tier 3 Alpha and Tier 6 Basic. They were just saying, can't we get some kind of rank up gems that help us rank up 6 stars? Like even from rank 1 to rank 2? Because so much of the content, especially the chapter content, like all other variants, is focused on five stars. Which is fine. I mean, you're telling me you don't care about those if you were to pull, say, five-star Knoll tomorrow? I think you would. And the units are good, too. But that was the point. It wasn't that they expected Tier 6 Basic and Tier 3 Alpha. Just more rank-up gems geared towards six stars. Now, the counter-argument, of course, is that Variant content has always been five-star oriented ever since it started eight variants ago. But we do know, of course, that this is a different game in 2021. But, you know, Kabam assured us that this was not in-game confident uh, content difficulty. It was more for maybe someone like me, your average summoner. Well, I'm taking off my glasses. And I am putting on my shades. Because Kabam did multiple things with this content that were so shady yes some of them could be bugs but some of them could also not be bugs and they could just be intentional nodes that screw people over i have talked to so many summoners including one who said prof forget this being compared to in-game content i would explore the abyss a hundred out of a hundred times versus going in and having to max out despair and fight the final venom pool fight. It's that ridiculously dumb. And I know some of you out there are going to say, that's what I love about it. I don't think it's hard. I think you just need to get good or rank up the right champions. But what percent of people doing this have like a combination of apocalypse ranked up which by the way this summoner has apocalypse at rank three as a six star and still couldn't out damage the regen of that boss fight and yes he could max out despair but should you really have to change your entire mastery setup which takes probably all the units that you've gained from this and then some just to do a boss fight ah, that sounds just just dumb this is a train wreck and look for whatever reason, the human condition likes to watch critical things. I'm not going to say negative things, even though my nickname long before the champion Mr. Negative came into the contest was Mr. Negative. So, for those of you that only seem to watch my videos when it's, oh, here's that Prof Hoff tool going off again about Kabam, like I promise you, if you actually take the time to go through and look at my daily posts, I praise Kabam a ton. I praise them so much less than a week ago when we had the return of the what if nexus style to cavalier nexus per five dollars this time limit five over the course of three days offer despite the fact that it's cyber weekend and normally i promote 
hoarding your units, which of course those weren't unit based, or at least hoarding your cash. It was just too good of an offer to pass up. I bought all of them. So many of you out there bought all of them. And it was just a pro player move that probably made Kabam hundreds of thousands of dollars. Who knows? This is the opposite of that. This is taking content where the rewards haven't been buffed in a long time, making it way harder, making it look like you didn't really test it before you put it out. Because surely if Kabam had tested it and given it to people like Dork Lessons to play around with more, they would have received the feedback that, yeah, the player base is going to hate this because there are almost no counters to this unless you specify the right mastery setup and even have the champions, both of which I'm guessing there are several summoners out there that can't say that they have the ability to do that. I would not further attempt this. And I have to say, I've done one path of chapter 1.1 1 .1, and... I still hated that boss. It felt like it was life cycle 100.0 because I had done the life cycle perfectly despite the fact that I'd lost a ton of health just on blocked hits from the War Machine Special 1. And then there was that final push which turned from life cycle them to like Nick Fury where you had a ton of feeling like it was attack damage, but you also lost your health down to like 20%. I had to kill him like three times. And the life cycle was not active on some of those. Because I know some people are like, oh, it's just life cycle. You just, you got to get good. Well, it was like three life cycles. So if you have fought that first boss and thought, how come this person won't die? It is not just you. I've seen that feedback over and over again. Trust me, that makes me feel better about my experience as well. But overall, like, are these rewards game-changing? Absolutely not. Especially compared to Cyber Weekend, which, rem reminder, because some people are like, Cyber Weekend, what the heck is that? It's every year. It used to be a Black Friday trash dumpster fire sale, which was like Tier 4 Basic and Tier 1 Alpha. Uh, and then we had the best deals on Cyber Monday. Well, now, similar to July 4th, or even like the gold trade-in, Deadpool event or specifically uh, the spring cleaning event, you get three days from Friday to like sometimes Tuesday worth of crazy good offers that mainly give you amazing bonuses depending on your progression level for buying units and then separate unit offers that you can actually take advantage of historically speaking if you were to get your progression level up during that three days to get both offers. So that's Cyber Weekend, and it occurs the day after the American holiday of Thanksgiving. I say the American holiday because Canadian Thanksgiving is not this weekend. I have also learned that over these almost five years. So there you have it. It's a train wreck. It is a, um, it's kind of an embarrassment for Kabam. And I'm not saying that with any sense of glee. I'm not trying to say that just so I get clicks. I, I just, I trust the people who've told me, Prof, this is the most frustrated I've been in a long, long time, and it shouldn't be this way, especially because the rewards are not that great at all. And what I say to that is, kabam, you've got to go back to the drawing board on this. I think if you're not going to buff the rewards, you at least need to give players more than just one or two options for that final boss. The regen is crazy. And because of the specific nodes, a lot of the counters that you would use to, say, reduce ability accuracy just aren't going to work in this fight. There you have it, YouTube. I promised you I'd Get this under 10 minutes and still get plenty of your feedback across. Hopefully I've done that in this video. As always, thanks for watching. Have a good one. And until next time, good luck in all of your potentially new content fights.